Hello everybody, w welcome to CCL Season 52. Oh wow, we've started with a blitz. N who would think it would come to this? I don't know, it's totally wrong words. An instant blitz. An instant blitz. Uh, it's Jonza with his undead getting a blitz versus Epic Bone Wagon with his dwarves. And in the booth with me is Squire L Dude. Hello. Hello. It's hard to think of two teams that do less with blitzes than these two in this matchup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the dwarves are down TV here, to the tune of a wizard. How? <laughs> I don't know. A wizard and a merc longbeard. That's bizarre, isn't it? So they were down 250 TV, with a strength up, edge up runner, and loads of guard and loads of mighty blow. <laughs> I guess the, I mean, Blodge and Block Mummies, a little bit of it. Um, mm. They have a Stat Freak White. Yeah. And four cool. How is this team. How is this Undead team so expensive? And this Dwarf team so cheap? Wait a minute. Know. Oh, wait, where are the Blitzers? Oh, there's no. No, there's Blitzer here. There's, a, there's, there, there's blitzer. one Blitzer, there's one Runner, and they're neutral Slayers. That's part of it. Mm. That's a really, it's a sick dwarf team. Like the fact he's been able to get a Merc Lino as well. Like I, I guess you look at the he's only got eleven men, so like the Merc Lino is kind of reasonable. But to get the Wizard on top is kind of crazy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Maybe the uh, the undead should have dropped some on their bench. Honestly, like maybe it's this. It's a hard maybe matchup this, to want to drop their, your bench though with this much money blow and tackle. Mm, but like this guy, what's he? 70... He's 130. Just him alone. Might have been an idea to drop. Dwarves are the matchup that people cite most often is why you don't want to have too many ghouls. Yeah. I'm not sure how true that is. No, it's just it's just that this guy's a bit shit, right? Blood step, yeah. diamond tackle is, is a bit shit. The diamond tackle was disappointing, yeah. And this guy's a bit shit for this match because, you know, he's not going to use Dirty Player at all. But you don't want to, I don't think you'd want to drop two. But if you drop two, then all of a sudden, like, you know, if you drop if you dropped him, well, he's 130, and then he's 80. So you drop 210 TV, and then, you know, that, then you're really stopping every inducement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The goal's a little... Ghouls are weird because they're very clearly good, and you also want to get stats on them, but you don't. They're such a weird, very, very weird player at middling to high team values. I mean, what you really don't want is just one with a bunch of normals because then yes, they're a bit they're shit. But like, if they just get block, they're fine. If they just get wrestle, they're fine. If they get block and chew hands, they're fine. But it's just when they start getting loads of skills, and you're like, oh, they're starting to lose value. Here. Once they get past the um. At the third level up, you're starting to really hate them. Mm. But and then block obviously sidestep sure hands, which is good, and then it's block sidestep. I don't. What the fuck else does this player take? Wrestle tackle. What the fuck else do they take? I don't understand what to do with this player anymore. Yeah, and like obviously they, because they've got no regen and no apple, they do tend to die in droves. Mm -hmm. So it's not really usually a problem you have to think about for long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um... it's probably a lead all blood bowl and killing themselves on GFIs. Probably, they're yeah. really good at it. But yeah, for this much specific, it's more like just denying the inducements, right? Like, yeah. Like, how is the how is the how have the dwarves got the inducements in this game? It seems crazy. Yeah, as Redhair was saying, I, it's why I don't. I'm suspicious of the statement that ghouls are bad are very bad in a dwarf matchup is because they're Otherwise, if you don't have ghouls, you're just kind of playing like a much worse dwarf game with zombies instead of longbeards. Yes. Wow. That's Excellent. Cool. Yeah, lovely. So, yeah, it's also that? a great Kaz. Yep. Dwarves, I guess dwarves chose not to use their Apo, or it failed, or they don't have one? Uh, they don't. They no, they have. do have one, they just didn't use okay. it. I don't know why I just saw it and just didn't see it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Got him.
No, yeah, I'm not. I'm not one of the ones who say like ghouls are bad. It's just the, it's the TV, isn't it? like it's the huge amount of TV. Like to 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 not give up the wizard here, you you would have to drop significant TV if it was. <laughs> if there was only a little, like obviously, if you could just have dropped a zombie to deny a wizard, then you drop a zombie to deny a wizard. But like, it was more the necessity of having to drop a ghoul, and then just how expensive that guy was for not that much benefit. Some nice pals that turn for the mm -hmm. dwarves. Really didn't need him, because otherwise that mummy just walks right back in. Yeah, lovely pals. Yeah, ghoul, like I said, I don't want to keep on the ghoul so much, but yeah, they they are a strange player. Very, very hard to evaluate. Um, compared to the other undead, who are all very straightforward in what you want from them. Mm -hmm. Doesn't GFI. Maybe she should uh, I, I guess there's a chance he just. I guess there's maybe a chance he just stuck on a random long beard and being there, it's, a, it's still there. Like he can't just tag you with a random long beard now, as opposed to maybe forcing yourself onto the guard guy. Yeah, I, I, I really like the GFI back into here, and then you're supporting yeah. all of this. Like that seems really strong, especially with guard there and, and strength mm -hmm. guard there. Like, it just seems really good to have a guard here. Guard, yeah. The square up or the square down are both pretty good. Mm. Square down really kind of forces the dwarves into going left because there's just not a way to get around it anymore. Yeah, and... I, can under I can understand like just not wanting to go into this one. Yeah, but if yeah. you don't want to go into this one, then there's so much to gain by going into this one. So mm -hmm. like, I think you almost have to GFI into this one. Um, but I could understand wanting to GFI into this one if you wanted. <laughs> yeah, the da the downside of standing still is that. The dwarves could have just put the skillless long beard on that mummy, and the mummy's gonna have trouble getting that long beard to go away. Getting him off. Oh, hey. oh. Um yes, Lord, that's a good point. Yeah, the the, the one blitzer is movement four. Um but he's still arch three, so you know he's still yep. kind of a blitzer. And the runner is insane. The runner is completely insane. So yes. though he doesn't have dodge, which again, you sometimes forget that dwarves don't get dodge on normals on the runners because it seems like every fucking dwarf runner has blodge. Yep. And they sure will have in Blood Bowl 3. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's gonna make that's gonna be so sick for dwarves. Well I guess and orcs as well, right? Orcs will have yeah. move eight blodge blitzers. Guaranteed. Uh maybe. Dwarf blitzers have more priorities of things they need to be doing than getting good carriers, so eventually they might get to dodge. Oh they will. As compared to dwarf runners who can just go block, dodge, I'm done. <laughs> I'm a complete player now. <laughs> I'll take leader at some point, I guess. It, it's like the rerolls, right? With with, 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 with orcs, it's because of the redrafts. Like, yeah. dwarves will be doing the movement 8 carrier, blodge carriers, even with redrafts. But the fact that there's no redrafts just lets orcs do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> mm. That's a reroll. LPS tackle, okay. That's. <laughs> it's the knockdown. Yeah, it's not getting stuck on him, like he, he couldn't afford yeah. to get stuck on him, but maybe he should have put this guy here so that if he had got the board down, this guy could have punched, but then maybe he couldn't because of the guard anyway. So maybe he just shouldn't have made that blitz, but then maybe he didn't have a lot of choice. I don't know. Oof, that looks bad. That's. Uh... That's dangerous. That That's two on the ball, isn't it? That feels like you can get two on the ball here. I can't see how you could. <laughs> uh, uh, you need that to be a pow, I think. And then the mummy can pow and follow up, and then a guard zombie can come in and provide the assist, and then white comes around. But he's strength for himself. Hmm. So, yeah, then I guess it's only a one. It's a, just a one D. But the runner doesn't have dodge, so getting a one D isn't that bad. Mummy on the ball is pretty nice, though. Yeah, that's a nice chain. Nice little chain. There are not many many dwarves standing up after this turn. Oh no, boy, this is pretty brutal. Now it's kind of seeming all right that the dwarves have got a wizard. <laughs> so, yeah, because <laughs> they're just getting pretty much dominated here. Do you commit the what the ghouls come in oh, and base stuff up? Maybe the players will have guard. Yeah, a little bit. Mm, I don't like this foul. Really hate that foul. Like, if you're going to foul, foul the DP. 
and probably just you know almost certainly door just jam him in here or whatever or somewhere yeah. like do something other than just standing there. Like, oh my god, that's good. Just three plus off. It's easy. All right, two plus off, isn't it? Oh yeah, two plus, two plus. And he is a ridiculous. He is a ridiculous dwarf. He is a vampire. Gotta remember that. Hmm. Dwarf's game plan is probably just potato. It's not the worst. If you have a vampire, potato isn't the worst strategy in the world. No, it's pretty, so, pretty fucked though. Now he's getting he's getting hit here, isn't he? He should be getting hit on two D this turn. Like this is so easy to uh, to free him. Like it's so easy. It might not happen still because you you do have to like pal this guy at least. But you got rack rackle. It's also going go to be hard, even if he isn't hit this turn. It's going to be hard to stop a hit next turn as well. Yeah. Unless the undead overly focus on these three hits and not moving ghouls back. Play mm -hmm. the game. The stand firm though is in the way. Like this is an annoying stand firm. Yeah, I don't. I also didn't like that. I didn't love that hit. Besides, but. But you just really, yeah. you just really want to knock down the stand firm to get the two D here. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, then you've got to bring this guy in as an extra assist, which you don't want to do. But you have to do because you have to take this hit to free him. Oh my god. Out okay. of reroll. Yep. Diced. So yeah, all these were kind of unfortunately necessary. To, like that's why he's making these hits to try and save this ghoul. Because if if that if that hit had been a pal, then all of a sudden he's got that ghoul to run run around and get the ball, hasn't he? I don't think he that, well he definitely shouldn't have gone this deep. I hate that. He could have been up here, couldn't he? Or here. Mm. And he's still deep enough. Like the dwarves can't really break away very easily, so I just have him here. And he's in. He's you well just one die so with the runner pick up the ball. Getting to scoring range is going to be hard, actually. Getting to actual scoring range after all this is going to be a bit tricky. Yeah. I guess he was scared that if he just rolled the pushes, right, that the, the, the guy would just mm -hmm. come through. But... Yeah. Wow. Wow. I don't know if you... I, I'm not sure you need... I guess you need... I, I had to think about the follow-up on that. So... Uh... Oh, he's, not, he's just not trying to score. Okay. Okay. Alright, so we're just... Yeah, we're just not scoring. Maybe he also just forgot the turn. Maybe he didn't realize that it's seven and not six. But that's yeah. uh, that is giving up. That means the un for the undead, that's great because now they they just got permission to just tee off yes. on all these dwarves, <laughs> and they have a bench, so they they should fail. They should fail the every player at the end of this turn too. But, yeah. Uh, ooh. I mean, they're really trying to get the the ball hits on if they can, but I guess they just can't. Yeah, mummies do love a turn where they can just mindlessly tee off on the other team. That's true of all just Blood Bowl coaches, isn't it, to be fair? <laughs> Mindless teeing off, there we go, yep. there's a Kaz, huge Kaz. <laughs> the Blitzer has to get out boat, otherwise you're down to a single Agility 3 player. You, you, you were tricked there, by the way, because he had the Blitzer head. Oh, <laughs> uh, he does. He has the blitzer head. God damn it! Why? <laughs> Why do people use the blitzer head on long dudes? I oh, know, right? <laughs> it's clearly the blitzer head. <laughs> it's so true. It's just so true that this is the blitzer head. Nice. Not me to be in for this foul. And he's done. Diced again. He's gonna get a foul again next turn. And yep. to tee off again next turn. Tries to get revenge on the dirty player. Can he do it? Yep. Does. I think to do as well because I mean it's a guaranteed gang foul, isn't it? So it makes sense to limit that. He's at least dealt with the dirty player aspect. I mean, he's still going to foul because you've got a bench. You've got a rookie here who can foul, so like he's still still getting a multiple assist foul in, but at least it's not with DP. Good roll. Good roll. Got the uh, game MBT on their ball carriers, pretty great. Yeah, cheek, and that's a good point, isn't it? Yeah, go, should have just gone for the apple instead of the Merc Liner. The Merc Liner was a bit weird. Yeah, I would have definitely gone apple. No, the Merc Liner is probably better if you can put guard on it or something to make it worthwhile in that regard. Yeah. Yeah, a Merc, a Merc liner with guard would be interesting. 
but but then it's 150 against 100 so it should be <laughs> yeah that's an okay we're just gonna foul a stand firm guy again okay yeah i was like confused by the non-follow there we're just gonna go for sure i like the foul mm-hmm Based on the KOs, the doors down to ten myth layers. Mm. Yep. Yeah, they are. Ten. Haven't scored. Haven't scored down ten or down to ten. Have a wizard. They do have a wizard for one turn. Will it will that one turn be able to make the difference? I mean he does have a vampire to take advantage of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe. Oh, and he's got lead eight. That's another bit of TV efficiency, isn't it? Minor, yeah. but he does have twenty. You know, he saved thirty TV on yeah. by having the uh, leader. Mm -hmm. It's still only three. Setup dance is you move players one square to the left or right, trying to do, stick them in the position they were always going to be in. This is a pretty shit setup, I think, from the undead against a. Oh, look, he got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Like, it's all you've got to think. Like, you know, it's an eight turn drive. Pretty much all you have to think about is how bad is a blitz. And I don't know what this setup was. It's an aggressive GFI though to start all up. Yep. Oh well. It's the second. It's the second GFI he's done for the blitz. I'm not sure they were either one was needed, but. Jesus. Well, he gets to hit. He gets to hit a ghoul. And it's a kill, so it, it was worth it. Well played. Correct decision. <laughs> uh, burning your rerolls probably worth removing a ghoul. Probably. Oh, man. It is if you win in normal time. It is if you win in yeah. normal time. I guess. Good guard placement. The ghoul, the whites just punch anyway. Yeah. Always feels bad when you slam all your guard and the guy in the middle and all your guard just takes the two dice regardless. <laughs> this could get tricky for the undead. Like the undead were pretty, you know, did pretty well on defense, but I think they might struggle more on offense than. Uh... I mean, I defense. would you would succeed on well on defense against dwarves most of the time, especially when your rummies aren't getting removed and your whole team's really healthy. It's usually a good, good indicator of offense against dwarves. Yeah, they, get uh, yeah, they hardly they hardly took any damage, did they? All this sea of mighty blow just did basically nothing to them. Yeah. That was millions of hits. Quite a few 109s so far in this game, though they were having a lot of blocks. Yeah, oh, I mean, Artemis would be, be going insane at this point. Mm -hmm. Absolute insanity dice, one in 10,000 chance. <laughs> Another non pal. <laughs> Where are the odds? I rolled a 1 in 9 uh, like <coughs> twice in 36 dice rolls. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, I feel like the blitz kind of got the dwarves out of shape. They're just not. It's gonna be okay. Like the mummies are a bit weird. I'm not sure the blitz ended up giving that huge of a boon for the sport team. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, this mummy is fucked by it, which is quite good. Yeah. So it's probably given it enough, but then he and he removed a ghoul, didn't he? So he's removed a gal, and this mummy is up shit creep. 
the uh, stand firm for this course has been very fun and interactive. It's a really good skill to put on players as a starting one, especially on bad teams that people will convince are good. I, mean, I hope that's something we get to see in the future. Is mm. Stand firm and defend really fun skills just spammed across teams. Mm -hmm. Great. Maybe put wrestle on it so you just can't hit them. It'd be really fun. Yeah, exactly, Paravel. Yeah, that's the thing, right? What, yes. Once anything happens in a game of Blood Bowl, like once you chain any amount of results together, it was unlikely to happen. <laughs> Basically. No matter what it is. Like, what's this? This is a 55% chance here for the knockdown. Now, now it's an armor break. So now you get to say, like, do you know what I mean? Like, because like, this is the thing, right? It's, it's Something's guaranteed to happen, right? If it's not a knockdown, it's a, it's a you know, it's a, let's say it's close to 50-50 enough to happen. If it's a knockdown, it's close enough to 50-50 to happen. Now the armor break is close enough to 50-50 to happen either way. So which, whichever one happens, you can say it was a one in four chance or whatever, but one of them was going to happen anyway, so it's just kind of pointless and stupid. Yes. <laughs> it's how I would describe it. <laughs> no, it, it's, a, it's a fixation on a specific result within this sea of unlikely results as being the more unlikely one, even though it was equally likely to all the other unlikely results. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Though, to be fair, Art, Art did get diced quite heavily the other day. <laughs> there, was some pretty, there were some pretty crazy happenings, but yeah, like, the fixation on insanity dice is a bit weird. Oh, here we go. This is a play. Mm. I admittedly like this a lot more for it with Stanford because Stanford would have been really annoying to put on the ball this way. This is just, yeah, this is just, I get a two dice oh. you and eat a reroll apparently. Wow. Well, that was pretty good. Yeah. What, what do I know? Base the ball, eat a reroll. Hmm. It goes from giving up a free block pointlessly to a <laughs> fantastic play. Also gets to free up his mummy uh, here if he's lucky. Oh, or bad enough to not hit with it. <laughs> bad enough to hit with it, sorry. Like, you've yeah. got to hit with it. You've got to hit with a zombie there and then get them to meet. The zombie has block, too, so it's not even, like, plus safe. You're both, you're rolling to the exact same knockdown odds there. Yeah. Yeah. Getting the mummy upfield is really great in that situation. Yeah. Right in that, yeah. And he's brought someone back as well. Like, that's even worse, right? Like, yeah. if, if block's here, then you've got the mummy forward and then the, the ball's forward. Like, the, the ball can come here. And then the you know, and then like everything's looking good now. You've got things forward, but you know, ball safe, everything. Like, this was real bad turn, especially with the, especially with a wizard like, you know, like <laughs> people say about the deck of being close to your end zone. Like this is not cool. This is like not cool, is it? Like dwarves are really slow, so having the ball near your end zone is making it a lot easier for them. So uh, yeah, I'd yeah. much rather just have the ball in a big midfield mess uh, with mummies in front of it. I, I also think that maybe the, the undead or playing a playing for hits is much safer on defense, but it feels like they're maybe playing a bit too much to just get hits on offense when the amount of rules I got in that opening half with their the handful of might blow was a bit of an outlier really against mm -hmm. this dwarf team. Yep. And you can't really survive just playing hits. That is <laughs> An insane block. Yeah, it's pretty rowdy. It was a last action, but like getting knocked over there was really bad. Mm. I mean, getting stuck on the zombie is also not ideal, but here we are. See, look, he hasn't got a lot going for him now, has he? Like, he's, you know what I mean? Like, these are all kind of even, evenly matched almost. Whereas if this, if this yeah. guy was up here, everything's getting cracked and mm -hmm. good. Stand from has been very, very good it this has, half. Yeah. yeah, it has been really good, yeah. Yes, it's a gal dodge and a ball over here. Big knockdown. I almost would like to have seen a bullet with this mummy to just get this you know, off this fucking stand from guy. Mm. So you, have to risk, you need to roll powers, like it's it's a big pain. Yeah, that's the thing. So yeah, no, I think this is I think this is right, but yeah, it's just this is the previous turns has fucked him here. Like and okay, it's it's a good long beard that he's occupying, but I, I don't know if I can GFI. I guess I guess you do have to do the GFI because the runner just dodges through on the backside, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. 
And Wiz as well, yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. Yeah. And you can come the front as well, and then Wiz and all sorts, yeah. So it's... Wow, rolls a one. Gotta re-roll that. Later on in the turn, especially. Yeah, that would have been disastrous. Pretty... Both teams have had some pretty unfortunate dice on yeah. important turns. Yeah, it's been a it's been a bit of a clusterfuck of dice to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, there's another one. <laughs> now this might be a good turn of advancement for the undead, but gotta think about mm. the wizard. So you know, first action block. Mm. Punch, punch, punch. You need, like, to figure like how to get, you need to figure out how to get this white into the game. Maybe you just do a blitz on that guy on the top, yeah, and he's gonna come around. It's good. I think I would Long have maybe blitz. Face. I might have blitzed this guy or something. If I was gonna do that blitz, maybe block him. Maybe block him with the white. Right, or the mummy, sorry. Block him with the mummy. And, and then, then he falls then to the right assist on the other guys, and you can just blitz off the guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't really like blitzing this guy over. So. Mm. The top team has no choice but GFI constantly. Yeah, yeah. It's... I I don't love a course of action that has you out of rerolls with three turns left to play, but no. you are playing to win in regular time here. Not OT isn't really looking. OT's really hard. You want to win in regular time as the undead. Whoa, so OT is no very whiz. likely. No whiz. Yeah, you whiz this turn, right? Like I think you have yeah. to because he's going to score yeah. next turn. Yeah, he's scoring. So, so you have to like he's he's sold out here. He's used his last reroll to score. So you have to whiz. Unless you like snake eye and your runner dies, he's scoring next turn. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you did get tackle on the ball. And he's off. got diving tackle here as well. So, oh my god, puts in the reroll on the four plus. Wow. I guess he didn't see diving tackle because that's shit. Yeah. Like. Not wizard now... and using your last reroll on a four plus is mental. He must not have seen diving tackle. Wow. I don't know. See, I'm not sure how the ball gets safe though. The ball has to dodge off tackle. He just scores. And... Oh no! You just that's right. Oh, yeah, he's out of range. Bullets. He's just yeah, just yeah. out of range. Yeah. Like he, he scores if he has range. to, isn't he? But he doesn't even have to. Yeah, he just puts. Yeah, there's like there's literally no need. I guess you score because so that you don't get bolted, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just score, just score and win because he's not going to score yeah. back now. He could he could have stole it for one more turn probably. He he can score back. It's just the dwarfing is not reactive. It's gonna it's probably gonna do like a pass or something with the dwarf pulser or a relay with the dwarf pulser picking it up and the dwarf runner getting off the field or something. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the movement up. for dwarf blitzers. So like, yeah, yeah it's, you... it's pretty bad. He's got no rerolls and three turns. That's that's about so as good as you can get to, to defend. This is the paradigm, or like I'm trying. To, this is like the stereotypical moment when everyone says this is why you don't want one dwarf runner. Is for this exact moment, where like you have mm. to score in three turns. You have one dwarf runner who can carry the ball. That's it. <laughs> yeah. It's, this is the situation where you do not want it. Pretty terrible rule five, I think. Here yeah, you've got to you got to stop the dwarves getting down the pitch. Yeah. But on the other hand, at least you're holding the wizard, like you're holding the. F the center, right? Holding his center is super good against Wolves. I think if because he has one runner, I think this is okay because he can't have another runner run up in the scoring position behind this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, he, like, what's... This? Yeah. You, he has to engage you normally still. Yeah. He's, he's barely he's barely got a blitzer, has he? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Gets the cars. Super relevant. Not really. <laughs> there's a there's a dwarf expert in the chat who can tell us all about how this dwarf team has actually played great or terrible. I, I haven't been there. I've literally just arrived. Oh, hello, PC. In the in the actual chat. Hello, PC. Hello. How are you? I'm alright. I've just finished one world, one blah blah. So I've literally just arrived. So I haven't seen it. Glorious. But yes, three turns as dwarves you, is not a situation you want. No. Three um, turns with a single runner and, and a, yeah. add, a movement forward blitzer. Yeah, it's not great. As, as always, Jim, I mean, I agree with you, but I also, you know, see the other side. There's always a, a negative, a, a positive whenever there's a negative. Well, usually, not always. Um, I didn't like the rule of five defense. The plus side is it puts the mummies right up front where they are going to, you know, tank a couple of dwarves um, and puts all the more mobile players able to move, as we're seeing here, to sweep to whichever side the dwarves are going. So that's the upside of it. 
the negative side is they've already taken a you know a little bit of space down one flank, which didn't have to be as easy for them. Yeah. I, I think the big thing. And I know you're an elf coach primarily, but still, I think, the big, I think the big thing with dwarves is like you just have to hold the center against them, right? Like you have yep. to hold the center. So at least the the the, the rule of five had that going for them. Yep. Yeah, it didn't let them down the center. It's meant this push down the wing. You had the responsive pieces to get round in front of. Um, though he hasn't done it as effectively as I would have liked, but there we are. Well, the dwarves are being helpful by taking pointless blocks in the middle of the field to start yep. the turn. No rerolls. <laughs> But it, it does mean that you could tie the two mummies up for the dwarves' point of view, which they did very effectively. Yep. A lot of... These are basically two-plus dodges that if you fail, uh, the game's over because you can't score. So, not the best ordering. Yeah. Oh, wow. He's How? blitzing. He's one in nine to not score then. Oh, my but God. The, and, yeah, this is not... And where is he going? <laughs> yes. <laughs> And how quickly is he going there? I think he's pushable a single space out of range, isn't he, from where he's going to end up? Uh, let's have a look. One, two, three. Well, we're going to find out very soon because he's done a PCFI. <laughs> <laughs> he's yep, also going to be based by diving tackle sidestep at yep, the yep. end of this action as well. And like I said, you only need to push him. I mean, if you knock him over, great. But if you just push him, you've won. So. Yep. And you've got also, wrestling. I thought that, uh, I think it's he... important for us to say we kind of gave some shit to this diving tackle at the beginning of the broadcast, but uh, <laughs> it's been great. It's done a really good job this game. Yeah, yeah. There we Except, are. you know, when you push it off... Okay, we're going to try and hit it again with the mummy. All right, yeah. got it. Back on diving tackle, or can we have to get him out of range? Yeah, now he's just totally out. He's totally out. Right? Yeah. It's just, it's hopeless. Yep. What's over for good measure? Not a good day for the dwarves, two of them out. Um, no, they had some Oh, sorry, I didn't know if you'd seen out. one of them out. I don't know if you'd seen the other results today or not. Yep. Or other days. Other days. Well, yep. it's a good thing he had that wizard, Jim. Yep. Um, epic, epic wizard. Well, Epic Bovagon, not a name that we've seen up at the top of the dwarves before, so it's it's lovely that they got to Chalice. Yeah. Um, it, it was a nicely built dwarf team. Clearly hasn't had a very good run in this game. No. No, I think the, the crucial thing was, like, you know, missing the wizard more, more than anything. Like, but there was obviously there was incremental effects over the turns. Like, I don't think it, yeah. was, it, was a, it was a great game from him. But ultimately, if he'd used the wizard, then at least he would have got it over time. Um, yeah, there was a turn to use the wizard, and he just kind of... Didn't use it, and they had a bad reroll, maybe missed having tackle. Yeah. Mm. The runner also maybe got a little bit out of position, besides, is it maybe a bit too far to the left, regardless? Ahead of that. And you probably need another reroll, honestly, because, like, that as good as the runner was, he just didn't have dodge, right? And, like, having agility yeah. 4 is all well and good, but agility yep. 4 without dodge is just so much worse. Like, it's. I've been so saying for a long time, I think there's too few rerolls in the, particularly once we come to the chalice phase of CCL. I know the low reroll meta gets you to the chalice, but in the chalice, I would love to have four or five in total um, for an overtime format. Especially for games where it's cheap, it works. Mm. For sure. So yeah, I've so I've literally got no idea who uh, Johnza wasn't it? Johnza with the undead and yep. Epic Bone Wagon with the dwarves. There you go. Well done, Jim. Remembered. Yep. Uh, congratulations to him. Undead win one nil. Thank you very much, uh, Scroll Dude, and very briefly, PC Glorious. Yeah, just just popping in. I am then going to pop out again, but I, I just I was going to say I really enjoyed Five Idiots today. Um, I stayed oh. for most of it. I was doing a few other things, but I was in for a fair amount of it. I thought it was fun. Oh, thank you very much. Thank I you. Hope you much. did too. I and did. Yeah. For people that uh, want to get to the chalice and have a reasonable chance, then uh, if you are also a fifty-five percent coach like Epic Bone Vagon, uh, get yourself a plus agility plus strength runner, uh, and you too can run at seventy percent for a while. Yep, and this guy's them. a vampire, as a dwarf, an orc, and you too can make shells. Yeah, no, he, I mean he used he used it very well. And and everybody else, and have about ten people decline their tickets as well. <laughs> right, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. Stay fantastic. <laughs>